More on the Commanders in just a bit. Before we get there, we kind of hinted at the Bills' throttling of the Cowboys. Yeah. And Josh Allen, after the game, said it's honestly quite easy uh, for him with the run game that Buffalo had. Take a listen to Allen after the game. I don't think I threw the ball that many times, which, again, I don't just get it done. Let's just find a way to win. And, um, you know, felt like the, the kid that didn't do anything in the class project but got an A. Um, but, again, like, I'll do this 10 times out of 10 times, man. Like, this, keep going. So, yeah, we've heard that quote a lot, but it's a great quote, uh, 100%. You know, definitely feel like, you know, I, I honestly, to be perfectly honest, sometimes I feel, Jay, that's you. You know, just like you feel like you didn't. Good you Lord. Know, you know. Wow. <laughs> I, was just, I was just trying to think of who would throw a who's, shot at him. me were, out of the stadium as well with the Dallas studio. Cowboys. Yeah. Man, it Jack Prescott along sprawled on the pavement. It was you or Connor. I couldn't <laughs> yeah. decide. And I just, I, I whatever. You were, sti- you were oh, my you're eye line. Like, yeah. Yeah. You were my eye line. So, sorry. Unbelievable. Tough scene, Jay. Yeah. Any response? Tough scene. Uh, yeah, I did, well, it's a kind of a tangential comparison of me to Josh Allen, so I'll cop that. But uh, this feels like the first game. This isn't true, but it feels like the first game in his entire career Josh Allen has ever gotten help against a yes, good team. It does. Like, when has like. it ever happened? Yeah. When has he ever been allowed to throw 15 passes and win a game in a blowout fashion? Uh, and the fact that the Bills were able to dominate so much on both lines of scrimmage, I mean, that was the story. And James Cook was a massive beneficiary of that and obviously played very well in his own right. But I think that this bodes well going forward, given that they play the Chargers and the Patriots the next two weeks, they play the Dolphins, which might be for the division, in Week 18. And James Cook, who we've been waiting to break out, you know, with the change of offensive coordinator, uh, he's been an absolute monster. Since Joe Brady took over as the interim offensive coordinator, I'm glad you brought this up, Jay. He's averaging 24.1 fantasy points per game. Yeah. He's the third best running back in fantasy football. He's he's running between the tackles they're using in the passing game. And what's weird is is that he's actually left some points on the field. Like as good as he's been over this stretch, there've been a couple touchdown plays. Touchdown against Philly. Touchdown, dropped right? Ex- exactly. There was you know a fumble here or there, a couple of drop passes as well. But you know under Brady, he's averaging 21 touches a game. He's got a 15% target share, um, even in a game in which you know they. They pushed Latavius Murray into the end zone. Cook still has a monster game. He's the second best running back in foot- football as we head into Monday Night Football. And look at his upcoming schedule. That the Chargers, by the way, that's on Saturday. That's the exclusive Peacock game. Go get yourself some Peacock. If you want a 12 month subscription to Peacock, you can go to subscribe to rotopass.com and get all these great fantasy sites, including a 12 month subscription to Peacock. That's it's 12 months. So basically it gets you to football season, draft season next year. These are all the sites that I use rotopass.com. It's, it's a terrific deal. It's literally the best deal on the internet. And uh, I'm a company man. Let's be clear. Uh, But with cook, he is somebody that I feel like is now for the rest of the season is an RB one chargers, Patriots, dolphins. You don't love the matchup against the Patriots, but he's running so hot. I don't know how you take him out of the lineup. Yep. If you were to start the season again today and draft every running back again, McCaffrey goes one clearly. I think Kyron Williams probably goes two, honestly. And then I think three is James Cook or Jonathan Taylor. Right. If Taylor comes back next week. That's the kind of discussion that he's in, I think. I mean, Raheem Mostert has had a pretty good year. I know, but A-Chan is, you know, a lot of that's come without A-Chan too. But he's he's been, Raheem is RB2 on the season. Yeah. But if you're starting again today and A-Chan's in, today. in the picture, I think that James Cook is, is right in that mix given the way yes. that he's played uh, under Joe Brady. He's an, RB, he's an RB1, you know, and it's interesting. So we talk about, I mean, like, coming into the season – James Cook was in that tier of like, hey, there's these these mid-tier, these fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh round guys, depending on how deep your league is and how running back crazy your league is, that are going in that mid-tier range that we think have the possibility to pop. Meanwhile, Tony Pollard was a top 15 overall pick. He was the poster child for our Rotor World Draft Guide. Got to own that. And James Cook was the better running back, and it wasn't particularly close. Real life-wise and fantasy-wise, I don't know that's all on Pollard, but still... This was a bad one and good for the Bills, to your point about, you know, so long we've talked about this, that Buffalo has just basically said, okay, Josh, here's your Superman cape. Yep. Go win this for yeah. us. And they basically, they did two things. They ran the ball terrifically. I mean, James Cook has over 200 yards from scrimmage. He's, he's one of only two running backs in the NFL this year with at least 220 scrimmage yards and two touchdowns in a game. The other guy is Devon Achan. Like, I mean, just when you think about how insane this game is for James Cook, we didn't have a James Cook jersey. I easily could have worn that as well. <clears throat> but the other thing is, is that their defense, which came into the game super banged up, and yet Dak Prescott 
He's no longer got to be in the MVP conversation. He can't be. This was an awful performance yeah, we'll by there. the entire Cowboys performance. I, I mean, you know, by the entire Cowboys team, 21 to 34 for 134 yards in a pick. His fewest fantasy points in a game since week five. His fewest passing yards in a game this season. He averaged under four yards per attempt. Everyone was bad. Pollard was bad. Single digit fantasy points were for him. Fewest points in a game since week 10. He's now had six different games with single digit fantasy points this season. CeeDee Lamb bails you out um, with a rushing touchdown, but bad day at the office for the Cowboys start to finish with three minutes left in the game. The Cowboys had three points. Yep. And we'll get to MVP when we talk the San Francisco game, but Dak, I mean, he's, he's done. Like he's, he's not coming back from that. He couldn't afford to have that loss. And the thing is, too, is watching this game, he had one interception. He could have had five. They dropped Easily. an easy one. They, he, he was just all over the place. And I think the story about this Dallas offense, this Dallas team, has been when they go on the road, they are just not nearly the same team that they are at home, in the dome. They look completely different. They look so much slower. They look lethargic. They just couldn't do anything yesterday on either line of scrimmage. Uh, and that doesn't bode well going outdoors on the road again next week at Miami. Right. And then the week after that, they do get a home game, but it's against Detroit. Yeah. Like Detroit's look, no pushover. Yeah, right. they look revived. Yes, yeah. they did. Yeah. So and then and then they uh, and then they and then they get a pushover. <laughs> the they get my commanders yeah. and we so they get a win in week 18. But yeah. like they they might be they might be on a three game losing streak heading into that game against my commanders. They're like gonna have get, to be a five seed and play San Francisco on the road in game which two, which is brutal. For yeah. Them. Right. Yeah. And then they're probably and gonna have to gonna play lose. Philadelphia on the road if they somehow uh, pull off the upset and beat San Francisco, which I don't think they're gonna do. No, I don't think so either. Tough times for Dallas. I mean, they, they'll have to like the first round. They'll have to go to the NFC South. They're not right. locked to beat. Baker Mayfield and the Bucks. Uh, no, the way they are playing, yeah. they are not. They probably will, but it's they, no, no, no. But lock. it's not a lock. Yeah. yeah. We move over to the Commanders. What would you make the look ahead line? If I said the, hey, the Bucks have won the NFC South and the Cowboys are the fi five seed. Cowboys at Bucks. I think that would still be like Cowboys minus six. Yeah, <laughs> right. Still minus, minus not, six and a half. Yeah. 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 But it's yeah. not like a ten point line. It's not right. going to be double digits. Yeah, or anything, yeah, yeah. Right. Which might be against the Falcons, but they're not going to win that division anymore. No, I think it's the Bucks. All right. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBCSports.com and RotorWorld.com, and I want to thank you so much for watching whatever it is you just watched, or if nothing else, being too lazy to click out of the autoplay after this video started, after whatever it is you actually wanted to watch finished. But now that you're here, I'd like to take a moment here to ask you respectfully, respectfully now, okay? I'm asking you respectfully to subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel. You'll get the latest Roto World fantasy news headlines, all sorts of great shows, including my own fantasy football happy hour. So go subscribe now. Again, I'm asking respectfully.